Okay, so let's talk about blood. On a side note, you're hopefully aware by now that this review will be spoiler filled. I'll run through a quick recap of the movie and then give my thoughts on it. It was released just a few days ago, after having a few showings at some film festivals. This horror is directed by Brad Anderson, a man who's directed plenty of stuff of which I've seen a fair few of his directorial projects, such as Fractured with Sam Worthington, the well-known The Machinist, a couple of episodes of The Wire and more than a few episodes of Fringe. Excellent. Let's make some LSD. Speaking of which, this film includes some madness. Not quite the hallucinogenics associated with LSD, but things do happen. Jess, a recovering addict, nurse and mother of two is going through a separation with her soon-to-be ex-husband who started boinking the housewife who's now had his child. Starting us off in the midst of an emotional family feud to counteract the horrors in the film. She moved out of the beautiful family home into an old decrepit farmhouse that her parents used to own along with the kids who she's got sole custody of who don't actually like the house very much and who are closely involved with the piece of shit dad who it's them so hard that they don't really get on with their mother. Anyway, enough about that storyline, let's move on to the main reason for the film. The horror. Just to get it out of the way, it is a vampire movie. I think. The two kids, Owen and Tyler, despite being told otherwise, take Pippin the dog and venture out into the middle of this dried out lake that's, you know, full of mud, deep as sh and filled with the skeletons of whatever. Them and the dog nearly get stuck, you f***ing little sh your mum told you not to go out there for this very reason. Like, even still, I know it sounds like a good idea to go and visit a dried out lake, like as a child or teenager, but from 50 metres away, I can tell by this tree that I do not want to go there. Like, seriously? Have you ever seen any horror film with a tree in it? The Ritual. The Conjuring. Evil Dead. They get back to the house and they're all filled up with mud and obviously Jess says, sort yourselves out you little rats. But the dog just f***s off into the distance. Where are you going, Owen? Like, d don't you know the house is surrounded by barbed wire? No, okay then. So Pippin gets himself lost and doesn't come back for a couple of days, but when he does come back, um, he's just a bit of a weirdo, really. Scratch that, he's a menace. He bites Owen, rips his face and neck to absolute bits before Jess knocks Pip out with his own dog ball. Owen gets taken to hospital because he was bitten in the carotid artery, meaning he was like nearly toast, like putting the toaster on one levels. Ah, bollocks. He's having a seizure. And now they, they put him in a medically induced coma. They all think it's some sort of virus from the dog, but they can't find anything, so they keep monitoring him. But mid coma, this boy just wakes up, like just sits up out of the blue. And and now he's the weird one. Unexpectedly, he goes for a packet of blood and starts downing it, the little oddball. Obviously Jess is like, oi, you, you little t what you doing? It's blood. And he's like, mum, I nah, I nah, just let me take it. So she doesn't let him, obviously, but he does take a turn for the worst and Jess decides, right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna check you out of this hospital right now I'm going to steal blood from the bank and I'll feed you it at home so nobody finds out that you're a vampire, which is actually a good plan. Until he needs it more and more and more. She hits a few snags. The hospital locks the blood bank away because, you know, blood's going missing. Uh, the rabbits that she gets and kills and drains for Owen don't satisfy him. He has another little seizure and she decides, you know, I'll give him my own blood. And her supply is not enough, meaning that she pretty much looks like a junkie again to her ex-husband because she's draining herself of blood. So the best option, she thinks, is to go back to the hospital, see the woman who's just been diagnosed with cancer again, give her a lift, knock her out, keep her in the basement and drain her blood instead. And, and also, just a thought here, if you're drugging this woman with fentanyl, surely that's going to be in her blood and giving it to her little Owen would have some side effects. Nevertheless, Jess obviously forgets that Tyler's a little investigator and she finds her, which was a horrifying moment to be honest, the fear and disgust and all sorts of emotions getting thrown about were a tough moment, but Jess just shuts it down by explaining, you know, your little brother's a vampire, so she manages to be cool and says, yeah, let's let's keep her down there. After this, the kids go on a fishing trip with the dad and oh my god, look at Owen, he's like full on blade vibes. Mate, also, come on, how do you not notice that your son hasn't ate food all day? 
Back at the house, this woman breaks free of her restraints and just knocks her out and the police come and look for her because, you know, CCTV and sh**. It's all good. Wait, no it's not. She escapes again and runs into the woods. And um, I'm absolutely certain, I can't show this on YouTube, but she runs directly into the barbed wire, slicing her neck to pieces and before she can hit the ground, Owen has become miles worse. He turns into a little vampire Tarzan running through the woods, sniffing her out and feasting on her slowly dying body. But yeah, things just go a bit crazy from here. Tyler and Owen get actually taken back to the dads because junkie mom and Jess has to trust Tyler with a single bottle of blood which Owen obviously downs instantly meaning Tyler the 12 year old has to drain her own blood for him because he tries to eat his newborn half sibling and that scene was actually horrifically tense to be honest the kids decide to run away from the dads and go back to the lake for some reason there's Fanta Black inside the tree and some pointless voices that mean and do absolutely nothing ah Owen is now a fully fledged vampire, doesn't know anything about anything except blood. So Jess turns up and sees this little blue demon shrieking and shouting and the only thing that she can manage to do is to drown her son in a puddle of thick goopy mud as he's become completely unstoppable. It's an absolute brutal end to Owen. Jess and Tyler come to an agreement that they can never tell anybody about what happened and they make up this story that Owen fell in and drowned but Surely forensics would be like, um, mate, he was chucked and pushed into this mud. But anyway, what can I say? This movie was actually a genuinely heart-wrenching fiasco, where the family was concerned. Like, what would you do for family? What would you do for your children? The pain that Jess had to go through, the things that she thought she had to do just to keep Owen alive, like she drained her own blood. She tried to set up her own personal living blood bank in her basement just for him. After facing all of the turmoil she did with her ex, like all she wanted to do was to keep her children safe and still she couldn't do that as much as she tried, which was a highly emotional tale. But it was spliced with a bit of vampirism that really had no meaning, connection or explanation. Like I don't think that it was a really bad concept, it just happened to be underdeveloped because we're literally left with nothing. Like, we weren't wanting more, we were just wanting something to close. But we're left wide open because all we see is a wide open pointless hole of nothingness. And then Jess burns the tree to fade the movie away. Another pointlessly ridiculous ending to yet another horror. Like, oh by the way, if you missed it, there's an end credit scene. Wow, there's an end credit scene which shows a younger Jess, maybe, or an older Jess, with a dog called Jericho that she's playing catch with. She throws the ball into the woods and the dog stares at it, whimpers a little bit, and, and then that's it, that's over. So yeah, that actually also gave us absolutely nothing. I've seen a few people try to make a link between the vampire tree of Guadalajara and this dead lake tree of absolute nada, which is a story of a vampire that was killed and buried under concrete, after which a large tree grew which happened to manifest multiple supernatural legends of which one may eventually escape, which I'll let you be the judge if that holds any significance to the plot of this movie. Anyway, I hope you liked this review. Please just give me a quick comment letting me know what you thought of the film. Like, did you agree it was good? Was it bad? Was it an emotional turmoil? Was the vampire story any good? Do you think that the origin story of the Tree of Guadalajara has any meaning or connection to this movie at all? I'm open to hearing everyone's opinions. Today, I've been Kofi from Unleash the Ghouls. Goodbye, good night, and... Yeah.